Hi everyone, thanks for tuning to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's video, which will take us to around the 12th of uh, March, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECL solves running to around a couple of weeks. I'll look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks and see what's going on uh, through March. Talking of March, uh, we are not releasing the Gaz of his March forecast today. I have that for you tomorrow or on Wednesday. Uh, there's been a delay uh, at the CFS seasonal website. I haven't updated since last Wednesday. I would rather wait if I can uh, to see the very latest from the CFS um, in terms of the seasonal forecast from them. So hopefully they'll get that updated either today or uh, tomorrow. So uh, so be no later on Wednesday. We'll have to have the forecast for you by Wednesday. So you can just wait a couple more days. Hopefully they'll update very soon. So uh, the answer of his March forecast will be uh, to come in a day or so's time. Um, but uh, we have got your week same day with the update, and I'll get on, get on that for you uh, right now. So we're going to start off with centering temperature. So that's in and confirmed, uh, Tadley. So uh, we currently uh, stand for March at 5.3, which is an anomaly of 0.7 degrees above average. That's provisional for the first day of the month. But for February's number, we came out at 6.3, which is an anomaly of two and a half degrees above average so it was exceptionally mild february as we anticipated follows on from january which was also exceptionally mild at 6.4 that's 2.6 degrees above average so we had a very very mild meteorological uh, winter we've got to march and yes we are a little bit above average for the first day of march 0.7 of a degree but much closer to average compared to where we've been during most of january and also February. I wouldn't be so too surprised if this March doesn't have anywhere near as big an anomaly uh, uh, as we saw for, uh, for January and February. It could be one of those situations where the March CT comes in quite close to uh, February and January. It may even come in underneath uh, January and February. That would be quite unusual, but it does happen sometimes that March is actually colder than January and February. This CT page at uh, Gazo. So if you scroll down down through all of the centuries and uh, decades and we come down to the latest year that's where we are for 2020 so we've got uh, february 2020's number in there 6.3 there's january 6.4 now the march average set, set against 61 to 1990 is 5.7 uh and the march average for 81 to 2010 is 6.6 .6. so uh of course that's a milder temperature series is warmer temp series 81 to 2010. Uh, so last March came out at 7.8. That was a rather mild one. But before that, we had a pretty chilly March in 2018 at 4.9. That, of course, started with a beast from you. had a mini beast as well in the middle of March 2018. Very mild March in 2017 at 8.7. 2016 at 5.8 was probably not all that far from average. It turns 61 to 1990, a bit cold average against 81 to 2010. Uh, 2015 in March had six. 6.4 uh, as a CT, 2014 7.6, that was quite a mild one. Uh, and they had a very cold March in 2013, I'm sure you remember it, lots of heavy snow and blizzards uh, during March 2013, freezing cold uh, in that March with a century temperature of 2.7, that's the coldest March for a very long time. And that was actually the coldest month of the uh, extended winter actually, so uh, February 2013 was pretty cold month in its own right at 3.2 and January 2013 at 3.5 was relatively chilly December uh, 2012 at 4.8 was uh, probably not too far from average but uh, March was colder than any of those months so occasionally um, March does come out uh, colder than any of the winter months uh, it normally happens that was quite unusual actually 2012 2013 because it was a relatively coldish winter uh, when March is the coldest month of the extended winter it normally happens because the extended winter months have been very mild uh, such as we've had this year so um, we'll wait and see about that anyway. It's certainly not guaranteed that this March will be uh, colder with the CT than January or February. Um, but it could be relatively 
relatively close, really. If we have a central temperature for that, say, around 6.5, then it would be very close to uh, to the CT uh, temperatures for January and February. So that's what might happen, actually. Rather than it being colder than those two months, it might just come out uh, with a very similar CT, which, of course, would arrest the... Um, uh, the uh, anomaly to average being significantly above average as we have seen through the first couple of months of uh, this year. Anyway, we'll keep a very close eye on that. We'll have the UK-wide temperature and rainfall data in very soon at the UK Met, if not already. Uh, so that'll be in very soon. And then we'll be able to have a look at what happened during February on a UK-wide base. Obviously, we you know it's an exceptionally wet February, probably the wettest on record, but we'll be able to confirm that uh, in a day's time or so. So then, of course, we'll have the, wind, the more um, the more extended winter data through as well, uh, very uh, shortly. Now, there have been hints in the model output that we might get some uh, drier weather for the second week of March, and we've been concentrating on this possibility in the videos uh, lately. But I have to say that as time is going by, this drier second week of March is looking increasingly doubtful, uh, I think. These are the 500 mil bar height anomaly flow charts for the next week, same days from the Penn State University, with the ECMWF on the top and the GFS on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in actual high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. Red extrapolates high pressure, blue to low pressure. Look what the ECA is doing in the 7 to 10 day time frame, which takes us to around the 12th of March. So we're well into the middle of the second week of March. And we are still under this deep trough of low pressure uh, with high pressure pulling out or above average heights pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic. So we remain unsettled up to the 10 day time frame anyway with the ECMWF, <coughs> excuse me, still driving in low pressure, still bringing in quite an active jet stream, and it's just a continuation of the pattern we've had all winter. We are hoping that this pattern will ease off through March and will start to shift towards higher pressure. But certainly, the ECM just wants to keep this very unsettled weather going. I mean, we're not up to the middle of March there, but we are moving towards the middle of March, uh, if we're talking about the 12th of March. So uh, up to the middle of the month, the ECM looks very unsettled. Now, the GFS is actually building up the above average heights more, and that's been a consistent theme within the GFS output over the past uh, week or so. It's always been the GFS that is building up this area of above average heights from the Azores high and pushing the low pressure further northwards with the jet stream. So it's always been the GFS that's going for that sort of drier solution for the second week of uh, March. And that split between the GFS and the ECM continues there. The GFS definitely uh, more anticyclonic with the ridge building up from the Azores high for the second week of March. Whereas the ECM, as we just saw, is very, very unsettled up to day 10. These are the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So uh, looking at Colchester today. So the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Colchester. And um, we're generally going to be a bit on the colder and average side for the next few days, actually, for next week. So a bit below average would be upper air temperatures through the rest of the first week of March. It does tick up a little bit there around the 5th of March. It's associated, though, with some quite uh, heavy precipitation. There could be some rain coming up Wednesday into Thursday might be quite heavy and maybe a little bit of snow mixed in over high ground uh, and then after that it goes quite cold again into our extended range which takes us from like the 10th through to the 18th of March then we see a lot of scatter appearing initially we get quite a bit milder there around the 11th 12th of March and then it looks like temperatures drop back close to average there is a lot of scatter though we have got some very mild ensemble members these ones up here and just here also some quite cold ensemble members so a lot of uncertainty still beyond sort of the, the first 10 days of the month precipitation wise not as wet as we've had previous winter but uh, quite a lot of precipitation there around the 5th of March before that it's case of showers after that looks quite showery and maybe if anything getting wetter as we go through towards the very extended range which takes us into the second half of the month though of course that is a very very long way out just looks generally quite mixed not as wet as we've had but generally quite mixed conditions continuing through the first half of March and we know that the GFS is on the driest side of things with its uh, synoptic sort of forecast actually the ECM 
ensembles will probably look quite a lot wetter than this if we could see them. Temperature anomalies from the second to the 10th of March, a little bit colder than average, not just in the UK, but through many parts of Western Europe, actually. So that's quite a big change on what we've had through this winter so far. We've got to uh, the beginning of spring, and the anomaly has gone below average across many Western parts of Europe, looking quite chilly in the week ahead, to say the least. Precipitation anomalies are not as wet as they have been, so close to, or maybe even hinting at being slightly drier than average through some parts of the UK. Although, again, bear in mind, uh, this is based on the GFS output, which is more anti-cyclonic, as we saw on the height anomaly from Penn State University. ECM is a lot more unsettled. So this is how the GFS 6 o'clock run is looking for Thursday. Low pressures over top of the country. I could bring some rain or some hill snow on uh, Wednesday into Thursday. That gets out of the way through to Friday. We start to pull down quite a cold northerly wind. Then uh, high pressure has a go at building over Scandinavia. So uh, we're having a go about building for Scandinavian high. It doesn't quite come off and actually we go into a mild or a very mild southwesterly push as we get through to the 10th of March. That's bringing much milder air in from the middle of the Atlantic. And then up to uh, day 10, which is Thursday 12th of March, we've got high pressure to the south and low pressure to the north and we're bringing in a flat westerly. It looks quite mild with that uh, westerly. Mainly dry for England and Wales, more unsettled up across uh, northern parts of the country. The high pressure and pulls out into the middle of the Atlantic as we go out to the middle part of March with low pressure starting to dive in from the northwest and the upshot of that is that we eventually start pulling in colder air from the north. Notice that uh, the low pressure is exiting away into uh, Denmark there on the 18th of March. As far as we can go, winds are turning into the north so that's unsettled and cold through the middle part of March. It does have a few days of drier and spring-like weather through the second week of March GFS but then it goes to something cold and unsettled. Uh, then we move through to the GM. That's how the GM looks for Thursday. Low pressure over the country. That's bringing rain, possibly some hill snow mixed in that too. We keep unsettled weather going into the weekend as well. Beyond that, winds turning into the north to northwest early next week. And then more low pressure in off the Atlantic. The GM just keeps things very unsettled up to day 10, which is Thursday. Uh, the 12th of March. ECM, we know this is going to be more unsettled compared to the GFS. So, uh, again, um, Thursday, showers, longer spells of rain, possibly hill snow mixed in, and then low pressure continues to push through into the weekend. Early next week, more low pressure is coming in off the Atlantic. We saw it on the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts. There we are at day 10, Thursday, 12th of March. Low pressure is well and truly in control. Heavy showers, if not longer spells of rain, and looking really unsettled there uh, as well with the ECM. This is the precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So wintry showers mainly in the north and west uh, today. Tomorrow we might uh, push some of those wintry showers further inland. Uh, then we go through to Wednesday and Thursday. We've got some rain in the south then, Wednesday through to Thursday, which may turn to uh, sleet or snow over high ground across more southern parts of the country. You need to keep a bit of an eye on that. That pushes out of the way through Thursday and we turn dry after a time, but then more showery rain Again, possibly with some hill snow mixed in, pushes in on Friday. Into the weekend, turning increasingly unsettled. Heavy rain pushing through during the weekend and into the early part. Uh, but next week, and I'm about a really wet and windy weather there on the 10th of March, for example. Snow in the north, heavy rain down in the south. If anything, the ECM looks more unsettled for the second week of March than it does through the first week of the month. And then hanging up towards day 10, we've got another pulse of really wet weather here across southern and southeastern parts of the country around the 11th, 12th. Uh, and then we finish up, uh, just gone past day 10, of course. So let's just quickly click through to that. We're going to finish up at day 10, which is going to be 240 hours. We need like that. Winter showers in the north and west uh, and heavy rain, clearing rain from the east. But there's more rain uh, to the west of Ilam. So I'm afraid the ECM uh, looks like it's keeping the deluge going into the middle of March now.
or up to the middle of March anyway. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 12th of March. We have 39 members of the ECM Ensembles, a big majority of them, including the control and the operational run, that just look really unsettled up to day 10 with low pressure, uh, well and truly dominating the weather. 12 have the low pressure out in the middle of the Atlantic and are building up an area of above average heights to our east. They're a drier option and they bring in sort of a southeasterly type wing. So yes, there is a minority option to have things settle down by day 10, but the majority of ECM Ensemble members are still looking very unsettled up to the 12th of March. In two weeks time, these are the options that we've got. This is the 17th of March. So we have 23 members of the ECM Ensembles with low pressure just out to the west of the country. So even those are still quite unsettled up to the 17th of March. 14 with low pressure out to the west, some higher pressure to the east. That's going to be bringing up subly winds. That will be a very mild option. And he's trying to turn a bit drier as well uh, with that. And then 14 have a ridge extending through the country from the northeast. Obviously, that's going to be the driest, uh, that's going to be the driest of all options. But uh, overall, even in two weeks' time, E7 Ensembles do hint at the possibility anyway that the weather could still be a bit unsettled either then. Uh, so, Seven V2, finally, these are 500 millibar heights, bring down to weak beers. The first weak beer takes us from the 2nd to the 8th of March. The coming week unsettled, low pressure in off the Atlantic. Quite a chilly northwest wind setting up as well, so it's going to be a bit on the cold side as well as being uh, unsettled in the week ahead. Week 2 is the 9th to the 15th of March. Below average heights went up to the northwest, above average heights building to our south and pushing northwards. Jet streams being pushed northwards as well. That is trying to settle things down, especially for southern parts of the country. Menor probably still quite unsettled. Week 3 uh, is looking like this. It's the 16th to the 22nd of March. A mid-Atlantic ridge then with a trough over Scandinavia. That looks rather cold and potentially a bit unsettled now for week 3. So that's a bit of a change of what the CFS has been forecasting lately. That does look colder and more unsettled for the third week of the month. And then week four, which is the 23rd to the 29th of March, then have above average heights setting up more or less over the top of the country. Below average heights out to the northwest. Jet stream, again, is getting pushed northwards. So that is turning things drier and much milder into the closing stages of the month. Temperature anomalies with the CFS V2 for the week ahead, the second to the 8th of March, actually cold. Colder than average. We haven't seen that much over the past few months, but yes, a cold and average temperature anomaly being forecast by the CFS for the week ahead. Week two temperature anomaly is from the 9th to the 15th of March. Uh, mild and average for England and Wales, near normal for Scotland and Ireland. That looks a rather mild a week. Uh, week three, though, is a bit colder again. This is the 16th to the 22nd of March. Average to slightly below average temperature anomalies in that week. And then week four, that's the mildest week. Um, 23rd to 29th of March, significantly milder than average. But that's been pushed back. Uh, a couple of days ago, CFS was forecasting all weeks to be milder than average, right the way from this week through to the end of, or towards the end of the month. Now, it's not until week four that we go significantly above average. So that's a bit of a change from the CFS. Precipitation-wise, uh, week one, second to the eighth of March, is uh, a wetter than average. It's uh, uh, We have above average rainfall in this week, particularly focused on more southern parts of the country. Uh, then week two, also, it's the night of the 15th of March, also hints at being... Uh, a bit wet and average, this time more towards the north, near normal rainfall down in the south. Week 3 is the 16th, 22nd of March. That looks a bit drier, especially to the west of us. That's because we've got a mid-Atlantic ridge, of course. And then week 4, which is the 23rd to the 29th of March, that one has uh, average precipitation anomalies. So, I mean, it is a bit of a confused picture, this, uh, now. It looked quite clear-cut um, a few days ago that we would build up some higher pressure during the second week of the month. But you'll have gathered from going through the data that that is in doubt. The ECM, of course, never really went for it, or at least a short-range ECM never really went for it. The longer-range ECM 
uh, I'm told, was very much pointing towards higher pressure for the second week of March. But the shorter range never really was set on it. The GM also has never really been set on it. It's always been the GFS that has uh, been going with this idea, and the CFS too, the long-range CFS. It's been that, that data that's been going for... Uh, for higher pressure through the second week of March. There's doubt about it, and it could be that the first half of March now is going to be quite unsettled, and maybe in the second week of March might be more unsettled than the first week, this week uh, of the month. So overall, not great news for anybody who's hoping for high pressure to uh, begin to exert its authority during March. It may happen in the second half of the month, but the first half of March is now looking uh, quite unsettled, I think, reading between all of the data all uh, right that's it for your video today quite a day uh, today tomorrow hopefully we'll be able to bring you the uh Gazwell's march forecast if not it'll definitely be on wednesday i won't leave it anyway any later than wednesday to do that we'll also have the ecmw 30 day look ahead uh tomorrow and uh a week same day for your update as always with regular features too that's all for now though and thanks for watching